keyboard and it should be working. Yeah. <laughs> Tristan Shop Talk episode number 17 and I'm here with Ari Kyle. Ari Kyle. Well, I, I, when I had said your name to a few of the guys at the gym, um, I was like, Ari? They are like, no, Ari. <laughs> conditioned everybody to kind of like because every ever since I was little people like would always call me either like Ari or Ariana because they thought Ari was short for something and I would flip out I'm like that's not my name so whenever somebody calls me like Ari it's like I have conditioned those around me to be like no don't call it that it's Ari right yeah yeah so you're born and raised from Houston and you're born and raised in Houston um Born in New Orleans, I'm actually a military brat, so oh, wow. I was, yeah, I was born in New Orleans, and then I moved to Okinawa for a few years, moved to California, and moved to Texas. I actually lived here when I was younger, and then my grandmother got sick, so my mother wanted to be closer to her, so we moved back to New Orleans. Wow. Yeah. Oh, what branch was your uh, family in? Your... Marine Corps, baby. Oh, wow. Ura. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's awesome. And uh, dad and mom, or just dad. Just dad. Mm-hmm. So he's a marine. No, so he's a marine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my dad was navy, so veteran. Navy. Oh, very yeah, nice, waterman. So. But but see, I I do notice that in a lot of MMA fighters and a lot of fighters in general, they always come back. They always have this. Um, how can I put it? It's. Uh, this background where the background comes from, you know, kind of... Like, like a different you know, mentality to when it comes to certain things? Correct. Like, it's, it's more like just structure. Structure, I guess, you know, if you have, like, a way of growing up, like, your father might have maybe more structure to than the regular civilian. I, I get that. I think with MMA fighters, you'll find, like, one of two paths. Like, you'll find, like... You have your Derek Lewis's where they grew up, they were in jail, they had not a lot of resources maybe growing up, and then they found this and this saved them. Or you have somebody kind of like me where I had a lot of structure growing up in my life, like pretty much, but then you kind of still find the avenue of martial arts. And I think it's a really beautiful thing because no matter like, walks of life it's like we're all in the gym training at the same time and for the same goal right mm-hmm. right because i mean that when i was younger i had always wanted i mean i would get of course in a little street fights here and there mm-hmm. in, in the neighborhood or at school. Yeah. but you know as, as it kind of wears on your self-esteem as you're growing up whatever you know but i felt times i would ask my mom hey i want to learn karate or i want to learn some self-defense mm-hmm. just for the heck of it but my parents could afford it or at the time. So then now, me being at age now, yeah, I've, I've, I've never seen this side of my, I guess, the way I am, which is more focused. Mm-hmm. Um, I hadn't trained recently, but I'm just saying, like, MMA or just training in general, it, it definitely focuses you. But then also I would feel, even with my dad being the veteran he was, uh, waking me up early in the morning, um, doing a whistle, mm-hmm. or just... just I guess having that routine of, of waking up early, doing something, and I don't know. It gives you, stuff. like, good habits and just something to strive for. And right, yeah. kind of like, you know, people are, like, always saying, you know, make your bed every day. It's, like, controlling the little things in your life that you can't control. Is that what you, like, mean? Things yeah. like that? Well, it would just be, like, just like just basic structure. Like, mm-hmm. my dad's structure probably was totally different from your dad's type of structure. But my dad would be, like, you know, obviously, if... if I was outside, you know, playing, and he was mowing the yard, and he would make it a point for me to help him, you know, yeah. you know I mean? or make it a point for me to have to wake up early, or make it a point, but, at the, you know, when you're that young, you don't understand those type of things, you yeah. you're raised by a veteran. It's just like, Dad, yeah. I want to play, but, yeah. like, he's trying to build character within you, um, and it's like, of course, at that age, you don't really see it or, like, appreciate it, but as you get older and how you are now, you look at that and you're kind of, like, grateful for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, it, it, I mean, even I would say now it's almost like um, I'm glad that I was pushed hard because now, I mean, it, it sets a limit, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, and like I said, it's relative to, I feel, a lot of MMA fighters where you have to put yourself, it's like you have goals and then you want to, I guess, 
push. And, and, and I mean, I, I guess you would know more than me. I mean, I'm all, I only train, <laughs> but you would know more than me. But I mean, you have to set markers, mm-hmm. and then you know, obviously, you, you get to that marker or whatever. Maybe it's an opponent. Maybe it's in your training. Maybe it's you want to do more reps. Maybe you want to do longer training. Yeah. Maybe you do more. I mean, it's just it's it's. Yeah, this is mentality. I just noticed that. I, don't know, I, just, I guess we started the interview off with like that, but uh, um, I just feel, and then that's why it was me going back to when I was at Paradigm. I mean, you were in the MMA classes with other fighters like <laughs> Colin, Malik, and those were the Wednesdays, I believe, evening, right? It was either during that time. I believe it was Wednesday. I'm not sure like, what their schedule is now, though. I, I didn't even sit there. <laughs> I would just sit on the outside and watch. But I mean, I, I, I did notice at the time it was a lot. It wasn't I mean, amateur, I would say, but but, but still, you know, y'all, a lot of y'all were very skilled out with things. And, and, you know, I guess when you come up to uh, your cardio, to uh, having that baseline, I guess, of just going in and it was three minute rounds that y'all were sparring. Are you talking about sparring or are you talking yeah. about like the MMA class? The MMA, well, I mean, because the MMA class would do the training and then y'all would ease into the sparring, right? Um, so kind of the structure usually was like some days it'll be drilling, some days it'll be drilling and sparring. Okay. Yeah. But even the drill looked like y'all were fighting. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like y'all were like actually sparring. Yeah, I mean, you have to give, like, somebody a realistic look so that they know what's going to come to them. Yeah. Yeah. Because I always notice that the, in the Muay Thai training, the Muay Thai training is more like, um, like, especially if you're sparring, you can kind of turn it down a little bit and not be really going 100% or not say 100% mm-hmm. or not. Um, it just seemed like y'all are very technical when y'all were fighting that. Well, then you were trying to be because it's like you want to, you want to, be a good partner, but also you want to make it as realistic as possible um, because it doesn't help me or you to do things half-assed because in the cage, that's going to be a detriment to you, like quite literally a detriment to you. Um, If I'm throwing something at you and I'm not throwing it towards your face, that's not realistic. So it's just about being a good partner and being a good partner is putting your partner in uncomfortable positions being a good partner is telling your partner when they're fucking up on something. Being a good partner is pushing your teammates like past that point because when you're in that cage and that door locks and you're by yourself, it's like you're going to wish you had people like that that push you. Wow. Mm-hmm. So uh, how, many, and how many title or fights have you actually uh, you know, done? I've had three fights. Um, sadly, I lost my last one, but I have one coming up soon. I'm still... We're still kind of doing the matchmaking like right now, wow. so I should have. I'm gonna do one by the end of the by the end of this year. I want to do at least one more. And is that gonna be MMA or is that going to be uh, MMA. MMA? Yeah, I'm getting my boxing like my book ready because you have to have like the special book for boxing. Um, I would like to start competing in boxing matches wow. just to stay as active as I can. Um, because it's like, the more that you do anything, the more that you can learn about yourself and the more that you can critique and tweak your game. So right. I would like to compete in as much and as anything as I can. Wow, wow. So then are ready for that before the end year's up? Yes. I want to have like at least one boxing match before the year is out. And then next year, I would like to be really active in both boxing and MMA. So and then how does that actually work? So does it when it comes down to it, is it more like are you um, you just calling I guess you need a promoter and you're saying hey you know I'm a child and I want to fight. In uh, terms of like matchmaking for MMA. Yeah, like, well, what's the beginning first step? I mean. So beginning first step is well for me the beginning first step is your coach has to approve. It's like you uh, can't just go into a fight. I mean. Some people do, but for me personally, um, you have your coach and your coach talks to different promoters, whether it's in this city or in, I fought in New Orleans, if you, um, in Louisiana. Yeah, that's, that's the last one that you write. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So it's just about your coach um, talking to matchmakers. That matchmaker is going to tell you, oh, I have so-and-so. Your coach is going to look at their record, going to look at their style. It's like, oh, we'll take that girl. I think it'll be a good match for my... Um, not for my teammate, for my 
for my athlete, or your coach can say, no, I don't think that's a good matchup. So it's just about finding the right person, and then I'll accept or she'll accept, and then we have a fight. Right. Mm-hmm. Because then, you know, I mean, I would also notice that sometimes in the amateur stuff, like amateur fights, a lot of the last minute they pull, or they don't make way, or they, yeah. <laughs> or they find out about you, and then maybe they find out, oh, I'm a loser, and I don't that's the thing I mean especially at amateur it's just like this is the time to make mistakes it's like don't get me wrong my last loss was heartbreaking I was very sad and upset about that but at the same time it's like I'm an amateur it's like I'm not going in there as like Valentina Shevchenko or Khabib it's like my evolution is still in its inception it's like I'm still growing and learning and this is the time to make mistakes so I don't advise anybody to ever you know don't like you're gonna be nervous of course but it's like don't put somebody so high on a pedestal that you're so afraid to fight them right right because that's not gonna help you in the wrong long run it's like you're a fighter fight (laughs) like you have to go in there and make mistakes and you know what you might lose you might lose and it's gonna hurt it's gonna be embarrassing but you just go back to the drawing board. You cry and then go back to the drawing yeah, board. Yeah, but I'm going to say it would be embarrassing. Embarrassing is kind of a... I felt embarrassed. And that's like a, that's a feeling, like for me personally, it's like none of my teammates, none of my coaches were embarrassed. That was like an emotion that came from me. Uh, that right. was rooted in shame that I lost. But I would also say sometimes like when you have spectators who, who you would think they... All I'm saying is that I give a lot of credit to fighters because you're putting yourself in there. Um, when it comes to even sports, it's a one-person type of sport against another person. And when you're lining up weight, it's not weightlifting. It's not football. It's not... You're I, fighting. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you, when, when you come down to sports, I would feel that that's one of the top three that when it comes to full contact. Mm-hmm. When you compare it to other contact sports or yeah. anything else, that's like... You, you have to be on top. So... I feel, yeah, it's a loss, not an embarrassment. I'm just trying to, like, kind of... No, I don't feel like that, that. yeah. I don't feel like that anymore. I know what you're saying, saying, but at the same time, saying, like, you know, you have to, like, man, that's some hard shit. Yeah. I mean, you're going in there, I mean, how how, how many pounds are the gloves that you wear? Oh, they're forearms. They're forearms gloves, and, yeah, like, I I don't feel like that anymore, but it's, like, in the moment, like, because it's, like, you're standing there, and... The other person's getting their hand raised and you're just like standing there and that's that's not a good feeling. And then you go back to like your dressing room and it's like you kind of have to resonate with what just happened because watching, like being in it and watching it back is two completely different experiences. Wow. Um, just because like you have this adrenaline, you're trying to do certain things, but it's like watching something back, it's like, oh, I should have did that there. Oh, I should have did that there. But... When I mean embarrassing, I was just more or less really bummed that I didn't come and do what I wanted to do. Not like, oh, I'm, I'm, don't, uh, I'm still, I'm still a bad bitch. Like, don't get me wrong. It's like, I'll go in there and fight again. Yeah, right. It's right. like, no, well, that's, but. That's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, that's what it's about, I feel. You know, that's, oh, yeah. that's the root of it right there. Like, not everybody has that. Like, even people who I talk to, they're like, you know, well, why do you want to go watch people fight? I'm like, why not? Like, why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, it's always like I always like come into contact with people who are just like, wait, you're into what? It's yeah. like you like want to watch that. I don't want to watch that. It's like there's it's like such like an exactly, but there's like such like an art to it. It's like when you've been in there yourself, you have a lot more appreciation for it at such like a higher scale. But yeah, I get that all the time where it's like, ew, you want to go watch that? It's like why do you want to go see that? It's like why not? <laughs> But, but when you were younger, were you ever, like, in fights or anything like that? So, funny enough, I was a girly girl. I actually did dance and figure skating. Not uh-huh. not competitively, but I was a huge girly girl when I was younger. I was, like, in theater, in acting classes, in, like, ballet and jazz and tap, and I did ice skating, so it's, like... I completely pulled an Uno reverse on my mom yeah. by wanting to do this, which is hilarious, I think. But even from that, like I guess when you, uh, when when you, I guess what age was that when you were doing all those sports? 
all those things, I will say, like, during elementary school and, like, middle of first year of high school. Because I started martial arts, um, like, self-defense type martial arts when I was sophomore. Did you just wake up and like, say you saw a movie and that movie? Well, oh, yeah, wow. so this movie, Colombiana with Zoe Zaldana, I was in love. I was mesmerized. Like, I watched this movie, and I thought she was so badass. And yeah, I'm like, cool movie, yeah. it's such a good movie. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> like Zoe Zaldana's character, uh, Catalea, she was intelligent she was fast and she was a bad ass and i wanted to do that so i looked up what martial arts she did and it was crop one of them were crop maga and i was in new orleans at the time and i went to there was a crop maga in new orleans and i signed up that day and then the rest as they say was history like i fell in love yeah like absolutely fell in love but how I got into fighting was from one of my instructors, Macy Chason, yeah. um, who's in the UFC now. Yeah. And she had her first MMA fight. I went, I had stars in my eyes, and I'm like, I want to do that. Yeah. And that's when I started to really take into account the seriousness of, oh, you're going into a cage and you're fighting somebody. So that's when I started really like pushing towards doing this. Yeah. yeah, it was... So then after you start doing your homework and then, you know, just yes. putting everything in priority. In yeah, because it's like, you can be like, oh, I want to do this, but it's like, those are just words. And it's like, without the action behind it, it's like, because, I mean, taking a fight, it's a, it's a big deal. Yeah. Um, you have to make sure your cardio is right. You need to make sure you're doing jujitsu, wrestling, and it's so multi-dimensional that you want to make sure that I wanted to make sure the odds were in my favor the first time I had my fight. Right. I mean, even if the person is possibly, I mean, maybe more experienced than others, at least you come with your A-game when you're mm-hmm. trained. And that's, that's what I feel sometimes, because even, I guess some of the smokers I've been to with some of the guys that are a paradigm, um, I mean, like I said, I haven't been, I've never been in a competition, but, I, but just uh, outside of Canada, I feel, man, if, if you put your heart into it and, and you've done everything you feel you've done to, to, to bring uh, what you would feel, I guess, your 100% or even mm-hmm. plus, then I, mean, I, I feel you go away with more, you know, pride because you're, oh, you're yeah. because of the fact that you worked so hard, you, do, you did your running, you were there in the gym, mm-hmm. you were there uh, constantly, you weren't out fucking off, getting at the bar, getting drunk, you know, getting, yeah. uh, hanging out with friends, or you were just in there doing your work. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, you have, to, you have to put in the work. It's like, I read this quote, I forgot which boxer it was from, but he said, um, like, the more that I train, the more confidence I gain within myself. Because you know you're in the gym and you're putting in the work. It's like, if you lose, but you know that you weren't in the gym putting in the work, you can't really be upset, but it's like, if you know that you're giving this your all, and you know that you're fighting, like, you're doing everything you're supposed to do, that in and of itself, it gives me confidence, because I'm just like, you know, anything can happen in that cage, but it's like, I know I put in the work, and if you can truly say that, and you can truly feel that that's true, that's what it's about for me, I think. And then, I mean, uh, sorry, do you average, like, uh, when it comes to your cardio, do you, uh, I guess, I mean, do you run a certain amount of miles each day? I do, or per I do a lot of um, hit workouts on the treadmill. So it's like, I'll do 10, like, incline sprints, and then that's followed by, a, like, a longer duration run. So let's say I'm running on a 10 for 12 seconds, eight times and then after the eighth time you get like a 30 second break and then you go into like a three minute run to really push um, it's called red zone running to really push your cardio um because in a fight it's like you also have that mental side of like oh okay my my heart rate's getting up it's like i'm i'm going into deep waters here it's like you need to know how to fight through that but also it's like knowing that you're going to be okay so i like to do a lot of those kind of workouts i get bored doing um just runs outside um and with how bad the streets are in 
my neighborhood, I don't really want to do that, but I like to do a uh, hit running. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. even when I was in the, in the military, like, uh, I used to do uh, sprints. I used to run two. I would do maybe like mm-hmm. a two-mile run, and then after the two-mile run. Do sprints. Yeah, or I'll, I'll just even say, like, like you're saying, I couldn't do outside, I'll go on the treadmill, and I'll run that mile up to, like, mm-hmm. fast, where I'm <laughs> getting, and then I'll run yeah. back down. And then once I run back down, then I kind of just slow down. Mm-hmm. It was, I was, like, that was, I guess I read in an article sometimes, it's like shocking your heart in a sense because it's like testament, like getting it up and getting it down, getting it up and getting it down. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's, that's personally how I like to do it. And then, like, you have weightlifting, but also for my weight class, um, I fight at 115. My last fight was at a catch at 120. Um, I'm, I fight smaller people. Um, so our goal is to be as strong as possible, um, as fast as possible while fitting in that weight class. Um, so it's like when you're lifting, we're not lifting for, you know, those big biceps and big right, arms. Right. You're lifting to be as strong and as functional as possible. Right. You're like, you're literally going to be picking somebody up, hopefully, and like putting them like back on the ground very unnicely. Um, so you want to be as strong as you can, as fast as you can. Um, while fitting into that weight class. So that's where my uh, training really focuses on is a lot of maximal strength and power training. So this is a lot of, uh, did you and your dad ever work out together at all? <laughs> um, so no. So I'm a military brat. Like I remember doing like a bunch of push-ups with him like all the time because he's a, like military people, especially if they're still in the military, all they do is work out and clean. Work out and clean, work out and clean. That's literally all they do is work out and clean. Um, so we would do push-ups with my dad when I saw him do push-ups. So I actually really like doing push-ups because of that. But um, That's cool. my dad was like, he was infantry, but he worked on like more of the tech side of things. Mm-hmm. So he was gone a good majority of my childhood partly because him and my mom split up but also partly because he had to do these top secret missions um but when he was home it wasn't like i know some military families or military kids have like remember like have memories of their fathers or their mothers being like that typical military person where they're like yelling at you but my dad wasn't really like that um just because when he was around, because he was gone so much for his job, when he was home, yeah, yeah, you want to make good memories with your kids while you still can. Yeah. Because there was a possibility that my dad could die. Wow. And the last thing you want to do is yell at your daughters for, because he's a girl dad, yell at your daughters for not making their bed. It's like my parents kind of had this unspoken agreement of, my dad gets to be good cop. My mom had to be bad cop. Oh, wow. Just given yeah. because he wasn't, yeah. he wasn't there. So when he was there, it's like you don't want to be mad at your dad. And, and see, that's the thing. Like I, I've always felt like uh, in the military, like sometimes you know they have like you know commercials and they're like oh you know it's like a beautiful thing. And, you know, it can and, be. No, no, and it is, it is. But I'm saying that these are also the other sides of it too. Mm-hmm. Where the other sides of it is more like uh, that that part. It's definitely. Are you are you a brat with your dad? No. Well, my dad. No, he's just a veteran from the from Vietnam. He did three okay. tours, but on his third tour, he got you know um, shrapnel and then he got sent back, and then he finished on his last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was more like uh, the after effects of of uh, war that kind of you know with my dad. So the after effects was just like you know him not finding a job or him being a veteran and so him realize maybe he should have stayed in or maybe you know or, yeah or, that's you know. that doesn't get talked about a lot it's yeah. like the transition from being a military person to going back to civilian life especially after such a long time but, but that's that but that's what i was also going back to when you had said what you had said cause mm-hmm. I, I figured that that kind of explained a little bit of, of your uh you know your structure of, of your workouts and i guess preparing for fights and, and wanting to fight you know and just having that uh because like i said i, I feel um, any any child that's been a father father or mom that's been in the military, you know, it's, it's, you're you're just a little different because civilians are their home every day. You know, they work eight it's to five. It's definitely a subculture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just, I, I mean, I feel it's it's not bad, but then also there's a little downside to 
should because, you know, presidents and, you know, there's war, war, they have to go, they have to mm-hmm. come back, and thank God they, you know, they come back. Yeah. Um, and that's a big deal. You know? And your dad being a Marine and especially in infantry, you know, that's, you know, yeah, I can only imagine, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, being, being a brat is definitely, like, a subculture in and of itself. It's, like, some, like, when I used to talk to my friends about how I grew up and, like, what I experienced, it's, like, they can't really relate sometimes. Um, but when I talk to another military brat, it's, like, oh, your dad was gone a year at a time? Same. It, yeah. It's just different experiences. Ooh, that got really loud. Is that better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> sorry. No, because like I said, you're even having me test. <laughs> you're like the, yeah. No, yeah, it's just different experiences, that's all. Uh, but yeah, so, no, no, but then, I mean, like, I, I hate to keep going back to the I'm military sure. thing, but um, I feel, um, yeah, that, that you know, you know, you, you, maybe you had like that, you know, just that go get it mentality. I mean, doing push ups. I mean, if I, had, if I had a kid, I would want to be doing stuff like that with my kid, too, you know, all fucking games, and doing push-ups, and, because my dad used to do the same thing, he would, uh, like I said, he would do this ring, or this whistle, and it's actually the same whistle when I was on the ship, because I, you know, I went and joined the Navy, and, and it would throw me back to, like, him, in the mornings, him whistling, telling us to hurry up, and get up, and mm-hmm. get up, and do the chores, and do everything, you know, and it, it was just kind of funny, but, um, but yeah, so that kind of went off the horn. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, as, and then so, I believe there was another fight you were supposed to fight, right? That was that, I believe something had happened with that one? Oh, yeah. So that was like a whole, like, thing in and of itself. That was completely, like, unnecessary drama in and of itself. Um, basically, like, the long, the long story short is I was supposed to fight, um, somebody from war and she missed weight and yeah. then proceeded to kind of bully me online. Well, try to bully me <laughs> online. Um, cause I shut that shit down real quick. <laughs> she tried to basically bully yeah. me online. Um, not taking any responsibility for her. Missing missing. Weight. Yeah. yeah. It's all my fault apparently. But yeah, yeah that was a very, because un- you didn't miss weight, right? Um, so I technically missed weight. Um, so she, the promoter messaged me an hour before weigh-ins, um, that she wasn't going to make weight. So at that point I had stopped cutting. Yeah. So I came in 0.2 over, um, oh, but that's wow. with all my clothes on. Yeah. Um, I would have happily gotten naked in front yeah. of everybody to, to do that. But she says that I busted weight, but I didn't. Because I stopped cutting because the promoter let me know that you weren't going to make the weight in the first place. Wow. So why would I stay in the sun for another hour just to lose 0.2? Yeah. So, yeah. It was very unnecessary and very unfortunate, too, because that would have been a really good fight. Like, win or lose, I wanted to get back into the cage Mm -hmm. and have this fight, but it was very unfortunate event. Yeah. It was very unnecessary. Too. Yeah, so I mean, but that was also that's also the other bad side of, of fights, amateur fights, I guess. Right? I mean, it, I guess. Or is that bad promotions, or would that be bad? No, it's like, not bad promotions, it's just bad sportsmanship on her yeah, part. Yeah. Like, um, I had never experienced, like, literally the last time I experienced something like that was in high school. Like, yeah. that's what it felt like. I, I heard <laughs> that, they, seriously, like, seriously. Yeah. Um, I heard about, like, it's like we're fighting, so of course it's like you're gonna have like some people are like macho, like oh yeah, you want to do this, but it's right. like she kind of took it to like a high school level where it's like she's talking shit about me, my coach, on her private story on Instagram. When I confronted her about it, she wants to take out her phone, like we're on World Star. It's like this is very unnecessary stuff. Yeah, yeah, and then you catch yourself like, what is going on? Like, literally, I'm like, wait, am I, did I just take a trip back to high school? What is this? Yeah. It's like, girl, you missed weight. It's fine. It's yeah. like, we could have gotten it rescheduled, but then she pulled all that shit. Yeah. And, yeah, I want nothing to do with her, her gym, anybody. It's like. Yeah, you live with her, right? I mean, I, yeah. I helped. Yeah. I lost, and I didn't even get to fight. Like, yeah. that's literally how it felt. Yeah. It was ridiculous. 
Because yeah. like even like with this whole last fight of the UFC, the the Chamov and the uh, Nate Diaz, like we missed weight. That that was like a whole. That card was a mess. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious how everyone's just playing like match because it's like we're just matching up things. Yeah. I, I don't get it. I don't. I still don't get it. And apparently, you know, Dana White says there's you know things behind and that they. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the he got mad. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, but I'm, I'm, I'm over like saying like just, but like you said, to be on sports and like and miss weight. I mean, like that's that was the baseline. Of, I mean, everybody's like everybody talks about that's what you know when it comes to boxing and fighting, you have to make weight. You literally have one job. And that's, <laughs> that's as a fighter, saying. you literally have one job is to make weight. Yeah, that, that's your that's what you're doing. Like you literally right. only have one job. Yeah. it's like. Two jobs, simply train and make weight. Because I, I feel at the Nate Diaz professional, he, he was even, I, I felt he was even kind of doubting himself, even leading up to it. But I still felt that he was still going to, uh, he wasn't going to tap out that quick. I don't know. But who would have who, who known? Because it's not going to happen now. But my point was, even that just being an example of making weight and another opponent just, I don't know, like, it's like, I don't know, you, you would never know why, the real reason why, but it just also makes you think, like, like I guess you're just, yeah, you're not, you're not sportsman like. I mean, yeah, it's like, you don't respect the, you don't respect it, you know? If you're gonna miss weight, it's like, number one, don't miss, don't miss weight, but it's like, if you're gonna miss weight, at least own up to it. Right. Like, take your L, dude, like, you fucked up, you yeah. missed weight, it's like, own it, but it's like, putting that blame on your opponent that's what's ridiculous to me. Yeah. It's like, we all, we all mess up. It's like, they're like, I'm not a professional, but my coach has always bestowed upon us that we're, even though we're amateurs, we're going to act like we're professionals. No, true. Um, yeah, it should always be that. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Bob has always like said that and I completely agree. It's like, you need to be, like, you're not a professional technically, but you need to act like you're a professional. Act like you've been here before. If you miss weight, it's like you need to do, you need to own up to it. Right. Because you're the one that messed up. Right. But it is what it is. It's like I'm still moving forward with my career. It's like I'm focusing on my fighting, getting better, and just trying to do and trying to be as dynamic as possible. That's literally in the past, and I honestly haven't even thought about it ever since you brought it up. <laughs> it's like that's like so like down in my mind that it's like, oh, wait, okay. yeah. I forgot that did happen. My not bad. I didn't mean to oh no, you're <laughs> fine. No, I think when I think like thinking back to it, it's like that shit was funny. Like that was funny. Like. But like I said, that's also your your. That's also the part of the sport as well. Like a lot of shit talkers. I know that now. A lot of shit talkers, right? Because. I I've I mean, never been like that though. It's like, and I get it. It's like you're fighting. That's like how people build up fights. But it's like my thing is, it's just like, dude, I do my fighting and my I do my fucking talking in the ring. It's yeah, like yeah. I never I don't see the point in like doing all this rah 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 rah. rah. It's like, dude, you're gonna get to fight them in a few weeks. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Why are you doing? I mean, I can understand a little, like little, you know, eh, you know, whatever. But but at the same time, if you're gonna do what you're supposed to do, which is make weight, be there, be there on time, you know, be in the cage. Yeah. Then yeah, then leading up to do what you want, but then if you're doing all that shit, and then you don't make weight, and it doesn't even happen, then all of this, yeah, it's like a waste of time. It's like, what, 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 what was all that for, you know? It's it's yeah. all for show, and I think yeah. some people like the show, some people like the rah rah rawness, but it, and that's fine if that's part of your personality. That's not part of my personality. Yeah. I very much just like to go and fight so that I can go home and watch Adventure Time. <laughs> I just want to leave. Yeah, like yeah. I like fighting, but it's like I get it's, I get like really nervous when I'm like walking into the cage. And oh, what's cool, yeah. what's really sucky about that fight is that I hadn't fought in about two years when I was supposed to fight her and I finally started like promoting myself it's like I had to get my own anxiety under control and I was doing good with that and then to come back with this girl blaming me that she missed weight it's just a smack in the face it's like bro are you serious it's like you're not the only one that has things to overcome it's like I have a lot of anxiety nervousness um, self promotion issues because I don't like promoting myself. It makes me feel weird, and I overcame a lot of that. And then 
to have that happen, it's just yeah. like, come on, man. That's not cool. Yeah, but I, 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 I can see what you're saying, as in, like, you don't want a lot of centered attention on you on, like, pinpoint, like, same thing. Is that what you're talking about? Like, like I, especially now with social media and everything, you know? It's well, not, I'm trying to get better at social media, um, and I'm getting better at promoting myself. It's just kind of like, I've never been good at asking people to pay attention to me. If you want to pay attention to me, you can, but it's like, I've never been good at, like, being like, Hello, I am once again asking you to support me, buy my tickets. I've mm-hmm. never been good at that. Yeah. I don't like asking people for things. Yeah. And it took a lot for me to overcome, you know, promoting myself on my Instagram. Hey, you guys, I'm fighting so-and-so. It's like, come out and support, you know, buy tickets from me. I'm not the best at doing that. And I did it. And that was something that I was really proud of. Yeah. Um, and then just to have that happen, it's, it's very much a slap in the face. Yeah, but I would think you'd be more like, like from what you're telling me, it's more like uh, you're more concentrated on your workouts, your training, yeah. and then all that other shit is just like... I, I very much, I think... You know? And then you just worry about, yeah, like you want to go to the fight, show up to the fight, be ready for the fight, do the fight, fight and, and then go home. home. And then all the other pictures and whatever, yeah, it's all that. It's all that. No, but that's, yeah. but that, but I think that's like the, the basics of, of being a good fighter is that you, you're not worried about all that other... Drama bullshit. You just worry about, like you said, I just want to go fight. I mean, yeah, that's what is Israel yeah. Asami says. It's like one yeah. of the best things that he ever says is "fuck the noise." It's like, yeah. literally, it's like I watch video on my opponent, and then after I put that phone down, I don't think about them again. Yeah. Because number one, if you're gonna be in my head, you pay in rent. Number two, it's like it does nothing for me. It's like thinking that you're this big fighter who's gonna go in there and kick my ass it's like I might get my ass kicked yeah, yeah. but at the same time it's just like thinking about my opponent 24-7 does nothing for me yeah. I watch video on you when I put down that phone you are evicted from my mind yeah, yeah, yeah. like I don't think about my people when I'm fighting it's like the only time I think about my opponent is when I have like those lazy training days during camp mm-hmm. where I'm like oh I don't want to do a train and then my mind is like oh you know so and so is training right now and I'm like you're right let's get up and train that's the only time I think about that yeah. but other than that I'm not thinking about you but I think that's honest though that's honest and that's fair you know that's that's the I think that, yeah that's fair I mean yeah, yeah it's yeah. like it's like you're fighting it's like you can't <laughs> like you really can't build this person up. Like, respect them. Like, always respect people. But it's yeah. like, don't give them so much respect where it's like, you can't do anything when you're in the cage. Right, right. Yeah, that's, no. Yeah. But see, also, I think a lot of people, they try to roll with the whole UFC bullshit. Yeah, like, that's, you know, that's exactly what she was trying to do. Yeah, boxing man. It's like, like bro, that's exactly what this girl was trying to do. Bro, you're not there yet. This is a little, you know, this is an amateur match. You know, so... This is an amateur match in Humble, Texas. <laughs> calm down. <laughs> like, girl, calm down. <laughs> it's not that serious. Actually, no, this fight was supposed to be in, like, supposed to be, like, around the corner, like, somewhere in Paraland. It's like, girl, it's not that serious. Calm down. This isn't UFC in Vegas. Like, yeah. you're not losing $100 million. Yeah. you doing this for free. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, so you haven't done any smokers, you don't do smokers, or you have? I actually haven't, um, I didn't do a smoker, I just had a first fight, right. I was going to do, I was offered a smoker this Saturday actually, wow. but I couldn't get off of work. Oh wow, wow, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Which yeah, sucks, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, believe yeah. me, I would have gladly taken it, because I want to stay as active as possible, but Girls yeah. gotta pay the bills. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So then, and then, um, so now full time Main Street. Mm-hmm. Wow, awesome. And then, so you already got, yeah, you got everything laid out over there. In Main Literally, Street. got yeah. my anime, got my boxing, I have my Muay Thai, I have my grappling. It's like, it's awesome. really a hub of, yeah. of everything. And I have great uh, training partners, sparring partners. It's like, Main Street has everything that I need, yeah. and I get the support that I need. Awesome. Yeah, I hear it's a good place. I hear it's a very good place. If you if you can come down. Oh no, no no I want to. I am <laughs> I am I am going to I wanna make it there. Uh, hopefully. But and then the, the it so who are the uh, your teachers there? Um so my teacher 
through Bob Perez. He's my head coach. Um, Jacob Berry is my teammate slash uh, second coach. I guess you would call him a second coach. Uh, Brian, he is one of the head instructors at Henzo. He's uh, the head instructor there. Um, and then you have like your other teammates who act as uh, coaches to uh, Paul because he coaches there. Yeah, so fun. it's a lot of people who are better than me, mm-hmm. and I love that because I look to them for guidance. I look to them because it's like, it's like you know, am I doing this right? What can I do to get this better? And again, they give me the support in the space to mess up, but also to grow as well. And mm-hmm. I didn't feel like I was getting that from Paradigm. Um. But I guess as when it comes to, uh, I mean, are you competing more against males and or females, or is it just even? even oh, honey, I fight girls. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fight boys. Well, no, I know you don't fight boys, but I'm saying when it comes to the training. Of oh, course, all my training partners are men. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you kind of get that. I thought you meant like fighting. No, like, no, 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 no. I mean, like, do you like you know your training partner? Yeah. Yeah, my training partners are men. Yeah. I have. I have I had a lot of training partners that are women, but a lot of them moved. Uh, Claudia, she moved to Miami. So I'm looking for some more ladies to train with, but right now my predominantly training partners are dudes, yeah. which is fine. Well, no, because I, I, just, I was just saying, because it, it's it's hard uh, it's hard to keep females in that type of environment. environment. Yeah. Because it is. I mean, I, I mean a lot of... They just don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of them like it for the training and doing all that. Um, I guess for the workouts, but when it also comes to like going a little further or more into it, yeah, a lot of them back off. Like, uh, well, yeah. And, and, I mean, and I see why, but at the same time, you know, I feel it's a good cardio workout. Like you can't beat anything, you know. Versus. I mean, it depends on what you want from it. It's like if you're doing it just to work out and like you're kind of like a hobbyist that's fine, but it's like if you're doing it for like actual competition, then this is something that you need to be doing. But um, going back to your point about like training with all men, it's kind of like, I've, I'm kind of desensitized to it now because mm-hmm. I've been doing it for so long that right. it's like, of course I notice when I'm the only girl, I'm like, ooh, there's so much testosterone in here. <laughs> Where's my estrogen? <laughs> but there's dudes that are around my size where it's like, they're not going like a hundred and ten percent with me, oh, yeah, yeah, but they're yeah, also yeah. not being like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah, like yeah. they're giving me what I need. Yeah, it's yeah. like I need someone who is going to be fast because girls in my weight class are fast. Yeah. We're fast. We're durable, and I get what I need from my training partners. It's like I've been really fortunate enough to have like training partners, a few training partners that I select from that I'm like. You're going to give me good work, and I can also give you work, too. Right. Not to where... Because I don't like feeling like I'm going with a guy, and it's like, he's giving me all the work, but it's like, I'm not really doing much for him because of my size. It's like, if I'm going against someone who is 200 pounds heavier than me, I'm not doing anything for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not doing anything for you, but you're doing a lot for me, so it's like, where I can find that balance between giving and taking, that's where it's good. No, because I feel uh, that gym, man, I mean, it's the center of Houston, so I'm sure you get, I mean, and then it's also, I'm interested in going there as well, because I feel there, man, you're going to be getting a lot of, uh, from all over, I mean, fighters from all over. There. Yeah, because so, a lot of fighters come down yeah. to train with Bob. Yeah. Yeah, so you're going to get a lot of different looks, and that's only going to expand your game, because if someone throws something or does something that you've never seen before, it's like, whoa. Show me how that I can do that or how I can defend it. The, it's only going to make you better by going with different people that do different styles or do different things. Right. Mm-hmm. And then also, I mean, also you, you can defend yourself as well. I mean, I, I would say that not a lot of women know how to defend themselves. A lot of women um, need to learn how to defend themselves, you know. Uh, it's good to also be uh, a female who knows how to defend herself so that she can maybe spread the knowledge to other women, you know? Oh, 100%. Because sometimes I feel it's hard for a guy to say, hey, you need to know how to do this or do that, or, you know, you never know, or, you know, uh, but I feel like when, you know, a woman knows how to defend herself, she can kind of teach a girl how to do something, you know? Yeah, there, there's definitely that aspect of it where it's just like, you know, we do this for sport, but at the same time, it's like, it does give you a certain level of confidence to know that it's like, I won't, like, if, if shit hits the fan, mm-hmm. it's like, 
I'll, I'll be okay. Like, yeah, you know how to react. Okay. You know, okay. well, no, you know how to react, and then if it's so, you know how to get away or whatever the my case might be. You know, that, that's 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 what I'm saying too. Is like, um, I mean, like when I was younger, I was a skinny kid, and I used to get beat up. I'm still skinny, but I'm just saying, I used to get beat up, and then like, uh, you know, over time, it's just, you get tired of it. You know, and then sometimes then you want to learn how to throw a punch. You want to learn how to do defend yourself. You know, and then I always felt like martial arts or just any type of basic boxing or any type of sport is always going to kind of narrow that in where it comes oh, yeah. to where it comes into confidence when it comes into just being um, in a situation where your anxiety is maybe not going to go through the roof and you know how to calm yourself and then get out mm-hmm. of the situation you know I definitely have been I've learned that but it's something that I'm always having to relearn especially with fighting because like I said I do have like a little bit of anxiety when it comes to fighting I have a lot of nervousness but learning to soothe yourself and learning to be present in the moment so that you can perform at a certain level and not letting all the self-doubt get into your mind that's something that I practice a lot and it it comes to play when you're in a case of uh, standing across from somebody who wants to knock your head off (laughs) literally Yeah, but I mean, but like I said, cardio. I feel a fight. Anything that wins a fight is cardio. Yeah. Um. Or even I can even relate it to um, most most people think uh, Navy SEALs are all like big dudes, big big dudes. And all. Most of them are all like trashies. Most of them are just six foot six foot guys, six foot two, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. Actually, they don't. A lot of those taller guys don't like to be really tall and be special. Op- well, because some of the obstacles are so hard for them. But if you're a mid, 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 I've always had in my mind that a well-rounded person is well, a round person would be like something like a triathlete, you know, that can yeah. swim, um, hike, you know, run. This is a lot of endurance. Right. A lot of endurance. It's just having the ability to just push past, like push, like finding out your limits and seeing if you can take one more step. It's yeah. like, and you keep on taking more steps and that's, that's really with anything in life. It's just like, we all have this limit on ourselves, like in our mind, but it's like, we can all take just one more step further. And what does that one more step look like? Another one more step. And that's really what triathletes are. It's just like the yeah. ability to not quit. But I, but I would say, I mean, just to like back to what you were saying about anxiety, I mean, I would think that's, you know, kind of a normal thing because, you know, you don't know, what, you don't know what's going to happen. Your, your, your mind is racing. Mm-hmm. Man, did I do this? Did I do that? And I remember this and that. I remember from the video. I mean, of course, you got probably like a thousand things running through your head. And then when you get up there, you're like, damn, okay, well, you know, here it comes. You know, here it is. Yeah. You know? I mean, after, you know, after, after they close that door, it's kind of like you have to say fuck it because it's like you're in it now. It's like you're here now. Like you're in the thing. Like yeah. in the physical cage, but it's like people men- the crowd. You're mentally people. here. It's yeah. like so it's like you of course it's normal to be nervous. It's like you're you're fighting. You're yeah. fighting. Of course That's you're awesome nervous. <laughs> but it's like you need to know when to shut your brain off and that's something that I've been working and trying to get better at. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll see that. So, okay, so I got to look forward to the next fight, mm-hmm. which would be... Um, October, November. We're October. still looking for matchmaking, but it's I will have one more fight by the end of this year. That's what I'm really shooting for. Any, 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 any friends who are fighting that you're going to go check out coming, coming up anytime soon? Um, yes. Uh, Casey, he fights out of war. He's fighting in October. Um, there's a Fury fight that's happening in like October 20th. Third, it's on a Sunday. I don't know if I got the date right, but that fight, that card should be good. I think it's gonna be a lot of good fights. And then you're obviously you're gonna continue training until yeah, oh, of course. yeah, yeah. It's never like stop. you never stop training. Never stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you continue training and keep pushing forward. But yeah, well, thank you, thank you, thank you thank again you. for coming through. I think how much did we get? Oh, well, fifty minutes. Not bad. No, that was good. Yeah. So, I mean, at least you got the, kind of the feel of this. This is really cool. <laughs> no, but that, see, so, that so, no, so the whole, like, the whole key would be, like I said, even to have another fighter come. Or even just in general, maybe, uh, I, I don't know. That, that, see, the whole the whole idea here is just to bring and just explain. And, and I, I would feel the baseline of the whole podcast is also, like, just to persevere. Mm-hmm. 
like meet people who are persevering, like you know. Like, oh yeah. I mean, like I, I work, I work where I work at. I see a lot of people who, uh, man, they would, they would just. I wish I could do that, or I wish I could do that. So then, I mean, I feel when you, when when I meet people that are actually doing it, I, I just like I gravitate, and it's just like I want to interview. I want to. Oh yeah, because yeah. you're curious about what their life is like. Right. It's like, what do you like? What like, are you doing? Why is that make it? person tech like what's going on like like and then like I said you, you de- de- hit it right on point I mean you know you definitely uh, your family everything you, you know or, you, it's all intertwined but, but, but I feel like sometimes you don't really find out until like you have to hit maybe dark spots in your life sometimes to realize to persevere and, and do better and, and want to do better and like you said that goes along with your fighting you know sometimes you might lose sometimes you might win obviously you know you're always going to come with your A game and persevere you know? yeah so but yeah yeah I guess that's a nice to top it off this uh, podcast but thank you again for coming thank you for having me yeah. this is again and really then, cool 